Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this tutorial series, we have been creating this website using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now we are in the process of converting this design into a blogger template. Now in this video, I'll show you how to add translation button to this uh, website. So we will add a simple Google Translate button over here and uh, we can select a language and this whole website will be translated to that language. And you can use the same technique to add translation to any other website you want. In this video, we will add it to our blogger website. So let's get started. So let's go to our dashboard and let's go to theme and let's click on this arrow and let's click on edit HTML. And the first thing we need to do is we need to get the script of Google Translate and we need to add it to the head of our website. So this is where the head tag starts and let's suggest fold this and this is where the head ends. So here I'll just create a script tag and in this script tag we will add an src and here we will add the link of Google Translate. So it will be forward slash forward slash translate dot google dot com forward slash translate underscore a forward slash element dot js and then we need to add some params. So let's add a question mark and let's type cb equals. And here we need to add the name of the function. So I just call it Google Translate Element Init. And let's set the type to text JavaScript. So this will basically link the Google Translate element to our website. And uh, this code specifies that this function, which is called Google Translate Element Init, should run after the script has loaded. So now let's create this function. So I'll just create a script tag over here in the head. And uh, let's create the function. I'll just have function and it is called Google Translate Element in it. Now here in this function, we need to type new google.translate dot translate element. And uh, in that we need to add some options. So let's add an object. And here we need to type page language and right now the page language is English. So let's type en and then we need to specify the type of the layout. So let's type layout and uh, let's set it to Google dot translate dot translate element dot inline layout dot simple. So this is basically how the layout of the Google Translate widget will look. Now there is one more layout called horizontal so you can try that as well but for now I'll just type simple and then the next argument is basically the element which displays the widget. So we can add the ID name over here. So I'll just type google underscore translate underscore element. So this will be the ID of the element. All right now I need to create a div with this ID and uh, it will display the google translate element. So let's scroll down and let's go to the body. And here I'll just create a div and let's give it a class of container. So it will have the correct max width. And we'll also add some extra styles over here. So let's type style. And first of all, let's set the position to fixed because we want the Google Translate element to stay at the top along with this nav bar. So let's set the position to fixed and uh, we'll set the left value to zero and the right value to zero. So it will have the full width that it can and I'll just set the top value to 90 pixels and I just calculated these values. You can experiment with these values and enter your recommended values over here. Right now in this I'll just create a div and uh, let's give it an ID of this same ID right here. So I'll just copy this and paste it over here and let's close the ID. Now the content of this ID will be populated by this function right here. So now let's go ahead and click on save and let's see how it works. So let's go back to our website and reload and the Google Translate element is not being displayed. So let's right click over here and go to inspect and let's see what's the error. So let's go to console and here we can see it says uncaught type error and uh, it cannot read properties of undefined simple. So let's go back to our code and let's see what's the problem. All right so here for inline layout I should be capital so let's change this to capital I and let's click on save. Let's go back to our website and reload. And now we can see that we have this Google Translate widget displayed over here and we can select any language we want. 
so let's go ahead and select a language so i'll just click on this arrow and let's select another language i'll just select hindi and now we can see that the whole website has been translated into hindi and let's select another language so i'll just select let's try greek and here we can see that it is translated into greek and now we need to customize the ui of this and we need to hide this top bar that we see over here so let's do all of that first of all let's right click over here and go to inspect and let's see what is the selector so here we can see that we have this iframe which is inside the skip translate division so we need to target the iframe inside skip translate and we need to hide it so let's go back and let's go to the css and here at the end of the css let's add some styles so let's type skip translate and that we have the iframe and uh, let's set the display to none and let's go ahead and click on save and let's reload this page and now we can see that the top bar is not being displayed now let's bring this uh, translate element to the right side so for that let's go back and uh, let's add some styles so here we can see we have this uh, division and uh, we have given it an id of google translate element so let's copy this id and let's add that over here so i'll just type hash because it is an id and let's paste it over here and uh, let's go ahead and set the position to absolute and uh, it will be positioned relative to this container because we have set the position to fixed over here and uh, let's set the right position to zero so it will be on the right side so now let's click on save let's go back to our website and reload and now we can see that the Google Translate widget is on the right side. Now the next thing we will do is we will stop this logo from being translated. And there may be some other text in your website which you don't want to translate. So for that you can go back to your website and you can add a simple class to that. So let's go to our logo. And here for the logo let's add a class. And we can name the class no translate. And now if you save this. And if you go back to our website and reload now we can see that the logo is not being translated and everything else is translated so in this way you can stop any of the text of your website from being translated right now let's add some more styles to this so we will display the logo on the left side and the language on the right side so for that let's right click over here and go to inspect and let's see how it is structured so here we can see that we have this uh, element we have this div and it has this class name of google te gadget simple so let's copy this class name from here and we need to add a display of flex so now we can see that the logo and the language are side by side so let's do that and i will also add some padding so let's add a padding of four pixels and we'll just set the border to none and align items to the center so let's copy these classes to our selector so we have copied this google te gadget simple so let's go ahead and paste it in our css and let's add a dot over here because this is a class name and let's go ahead and copy these styles from here and let's add it over here and let's click on save let's go back to our website and reload and the styles are not being added so let's go back over here and let's make it more specific so i'll just add this selector over here as well so it is inside this google translate element division so now let's save this and uh, let's reload this page and now we can see that the styles are being added now we need to display this arrow on the right side as well so let's right click over here and go to inspect and let's target uh, the anchor tag so we have a span inside the google translate element so in the span we have this anchor tag so let's target that and let's set the display to flex so let's go back over here and let's type google translate element and i'll also copy this class and in that we have a span and in that we have an anchor tag so let's set the display to flex and let's click on save let's go back to our website and reload and now we can see that it looks all right so everything is working all right we'll also 
bring this to the top of all the other elements. So for that, let's go back over here and uh, here for this uh, container, let's set a Z index and uh, let's set it to 800 and let's save this. Let's go back to our website and reload. And now we can see it is above all the other elements. And let's go ahead and change the language. Let's change this to, let's try Japanese. And now we can see that our website is in Japanese. And you can go ahead and open any other page you want and it will be translated automatically. So let's go ahead and open this link. So now we can see that everything is being translated into Japanese. And you can go ahead and change this to horizontal as well. So let's go back over here and let's change this to horizontal. And I think we need to change the class name as well. So let's go back and uh, reload. And now this is horizontal and uh, we can go ahead and select any language from here. And you can go ahead and style this just like we did for the other element. So you can go ahead and select this element by going to inspector and uh, check out the classes and add the styles just like we did for the other element. I'll just go back to simple. So that's basically how you can add Google Translate to your website. All right, so that's basically it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.